Some of you might work with a wide range of athletes. Let's say, for example, you're coaching a sports team, football team, hockey team, or training uh, a certain camp or something like that. So you might need to test a large number of athletes in a very short time. One test I really like when it comes to evaluating an athlete's lower body is the vertical jump. Now, most people know about the vertical jump and they probably test it. But really, when you're testing a vertical jump, the least important information you're going to learn is the height of the jump. I don't actually even measure the height of the vertical jump. It's the least important information you're going to gather from performing that test. So what we're going to show you is how much information you can take from, can learn from doing a vertical jump. So Anthony here, uh, Anthony Campbell, one of the great strength coach in Quebec, also a former basketball athlete, so he's a pretty good athlete when it comes to vertical jumping. Now I'm just going to ask him first to do a vertical jump without telling you anything. And then I'm going to show you what we can learn by looking at somebody jump. As you can see, former basketball player, he used to jump high. Now, of course, he, he did the arm pump and stuff, so he, he's getting much heavier now. He doesn't jump as high. But for the capsule, it's going to be fine. Now, most coaches, when they look at a vertical jump, they will simply look at the height of the jump, which really doesn't tell you much because you can have an athlete who weighs 240 pounds, well, if you compare him to someone who's 210, well, of course he's going to not reach the same height because they don't have the same weight to propel in the air. And also, some people, when they use like the vertex, want to calculate the vertical jump height, the way you are testing, shifting your, your arm here, you can cheat the test. What I'm looking at are the strategies used when jumping. So the first thing, let, let's do a vertical jump, but in slow speed. So just go slow. So that's the dip, that's the change in direction, and then we have the jump. So three phases, the, the dip, the reversal phase, when he's switching from going down to going up, and the actual projection. So again, dip, change of direction, and jump. These are the three main phases, and of course the fourth one being the landing phase of the jump. So what we're looking at, the first thing is the depth of the dip. So let's do it sideways so that you can see you from sideways. Now, what we're looking at is how deep he is going when doing a vertical jump. So let's do a, a short dip, for example, a very short dip, and then, then do a, a much deeper one. Exactly. So these are two strategies you're going to see when someone is doing a vertical jump. And right from the start, it gives us some clues that we can use in programming. Normally, someone who takes a very short dip will have a higher ratio of fast twitch fiber because the nervous system knows instinctively that it does not need to go down low to be able to create maximum force. Those fast twitch fibers can produce a lot of force in a very short range of motion. So the body, the brain, learn not to waste energy by doing down too low for no purpose. So that's the first thing we're looking at, how deep the squat is. Then the second thing we're going to look at is how fast he's switching from the, the dip down into the projection. So let's do one vertical jump here. I'm looking at how fast he's switching from down to up. And do one more. See, that is fairly fast. So we can see that he is not wasting time from the moment he's going down to the moment he's going up. Now on purpose, try to have a little delay before jumping up. Again, you can see the difference. In the first is natural jumping. As soon as he reached his lowest position, he reversed his action. That means that he is good at utilizing the stretch reflex. He wants to use that stretching of the muscle to create maximum production upward. Someone who will naturally take a pause between the squat down and the projection is not as efficient at utilizing the stretch reflex. So he wants to learn, he wants to produce most of the force through muscular action. So that is a, that's the second thing we're looking at. The third thing, so seeing still sideways, I'm going to look at the angle of his body when he's jumping. And again. So that is fairly balanced. 
Okay, the three strategies we can have is more of a balanced one. In the balance, let's go it very slow and, and stay about stop there. As you can see in the balanced position, the shoulders will be in front, uh, above the knees, which are above the front half of the foot. The torso angle and the leg create m roughly a 90 degrees angle. You can stand up. So that will indicate a pretty balanced lower body. Interior chain and posterior chain being pretty much equal. Now, if we look at the two other strategy, he could use much more hip action so the hips would move back. The torso angle is a lot more flat. The knees are behind the shoulders. Sometimes you're going to even have the tibias perpendicular to the floor. This would be a posterior chain dominant jumping position. He wants to use mostly hips, and you can jump up to produce the height. Oftentimes, when somebody jumps like that, you're going to see them jump slightly forward when testing a vertical jump because the hip action creates an horizontal movement. The third strategy would be to stay more upright. More upright, the shoulders would be behind the knees, the tibia angle would be more pronounced, the knees more forward, and of course the torso is more upright here. So that would indicate a quads dominant jumping position. Jump up, good. So that's the third information you can gather. Is the athlete naturally looking to utilize more the posterior chain, the interior chain, or are they balanced? The last information you can look at, you can uh, face the camera, you can do it from the front or from the back, doesn't matter. I'm going to see first if the weight is balanced between both sides. So I'm going to look at the ankle, the, the knees, and the feet to see if the body weight is the same on both sides or if he's switching one side when jumping. One more. Good. Pretty balanced. A bit more weight on the right side, but not that much. Now, pretend that you are shifting your weight more on the right side when jumping. Again. And you can see when he's in the air, when he's using one leg more than the other, the pelvis will be at an angle. So let's do it again, more weight on your right side. Look at the pelvis angle in the air. One more. Slightly at an angle. Now, that's a, that will tell you if right to left is equal. The last information you can get from that is when he's landing, are the knees caving in? Which would indicate either weak vastus medialis or weak glutes. See, that would be weak glutes or weak vastus medialis, depending on if he's posterior or interior chain dominant. So these are the information you can gather just from looking at how someone jumps. Then when you look at the height, what I like to use is a, a meter that calculates the speed of the movement, either gym aware or the beast sensor. You can attach it to your waist, you enter your body weight, and it calculates the speed of the jump and also the power produced. So you can actually compare athletes of various body weight. And, and you can't cheat it like you would cheat a, a normal vertical jump. So that's why when you're working with a team of 30, 40, 50 athletes, you might have only, let's say, two minutes to evaluate the lower body of each athlete. The vertical jump, once you have the proper high, you know how to analyze it, it can give you a lot of information about how you should design the program. If the athlete is fast switch dominant, then you should probably use lower reps. If the, athletes, if the athlete is, uh, has very inefficient stretch reflex, that, and you might be able to use more movement from a dead start, or you might need to actually train how to use a stretch reflex very gradually. If you have left to right imbalances, more unilateral work. If the athlete is posterior chain dominant, you might need more interior chain work. So it gives you a lot of information in a very short period of time. So that's why the vertical jump is one of the best tests for athletes.